creative space and then also compare and contrast the ecosystem of the Nigerian creative industry and that of other Western world or maybe other African countries, if you like. Uh, yeah, because the story in Africa is almost the same. We'd also like to prefer some walkable solutions to the problems uh, in the Nigerian creative industry. And um, Steve, I must say that it's a delight to have you join us. So diverse creative industry stakeholders have claimed that the Nigerian creative space has the fastest growth rate in the entire world. Now, this is further made evident in the British Council ranks uh, that Ni Nigeria is the largest and the fastest exporter of tech, film and fashion to the rest of the African continent. While the International Monetary Fund, that's IMF also, rates Nollywood as the second biggest employer in Nigeria. Now, this is due to the fact that over the years, the Nigerian creative space has witnessed an organic growth spurred by the advent of the digital technology. We've talked about this a couple of times, which of course supports content creation, distribution and consumption. This therefore makes the industry players to opine that the Nigerian creative sector has the ability to productively engage the country's teeming population. And that's that last line. You see all the English at the beginning. It's just for you to have a picture. But the last line, you know, engage the country's teeming population. And that's you, the youth, for which this show is uh, created for. You see why we're passionate about the creative industry? But let's just go back a little so that you understand why we're going to. I'm talking to you, the listener, right now. All right. Economic research findings indicate that in 2016, the Nigerian film industry sector contributed about 2.3 percent. That's about 239 billion of Nigeria's gross domestic products, GDP. And Nigeria's music industry grew by 9 percent by 2016 to reach the value of 39 million dollars. Now, it is set to grow by 13.4 percent by 2021. So this is irrespective of, you know, the happenings right now. Now, with an, estimate, uh, an estimated worth of over $73 million. Well, you could say that's small figures, but it's quite, quite a big one for an industry that is, in quotes, has so many challenges, who will go, which we'll go into today. Also, the gaming industry immensely benefited from a broadening customer base, mostly uh, the large and youthful population. Now, Unicorn... Uh, values Nigeria's video gaming industry at $150 million USD, you guys, and estimates mobile gaming to surpass $147 million by 2020. So by the end of this year, we're expecting that. So even in the gaming space, there's something going on there. So let's even, I have a complete breakdown an estimated nigerian industry revenue between 2014 and 2023 and in from 2014 26 million 2015 27 million 2022 let me fast forward to about 42 million dollars and then 2023 44 million dollars so that's an estimate from even you know the the, the everything that's going on now so today let, let's even connect the dots and get into this conversation let me start with you um with this one to uh, Steve, what, what's your general overview about the progression of the Nigerian creative industry? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's astronomical. It's actually phenomenal, the, the growth. And, and if you look at it, the growth is basically fueled by just that sheer power of creativity that uh, God has endowed our youth with. Hmm. If you look at it, I mean, all of these numbers you've been calling, it will, it will, it's heartwarming to know that this is not an industry that the government invested anything in. The government has not invested anything hmm. at all in all of the great in industry. Hmm. And if you look at it, corporate Nigeria has tried a little bit, but not even in a very structured and systematic fashion. Hmm. It's always been, oh, okay, we are organizing a show here. Hmm. Let's, 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 it's always, I call it tokenism to a large extent. <laughs> We're organizing a show here. We need some musicians to come and play. Hmm. Uh, but look at, there's a lot more that could be done structurally. But I think what I've just mentioned is also the good side of what has happened with the industry. Hmm. To the extent that these are privately led initiatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guys who started uh, Nollywood were just uh, 
uh, Igbo traders hmm. saw an opportunity and took advantage of it. And look at how well it has grown to now. People talk about the new new knowledge. Lot of more uh, input goes into the scripting and all of the whole technical details. Hmm. But the same music. And the people like Kenny uh, Ogunbe, Obi Asika, Audu Mekori, those are the people their money until you now found this new set of Nigerian mm. entertainment and they like they be do like whiskey who are also developing new talent so it's always been about us mm. you know and and, and the, the, the growth has been really, really phenomenal like like you rightly point when to the base GDP of this country of course where did they look look to they look into the creative space like Nollywood music and everything mm. I see the power of what has happened with us, especially in this creative space, that Nigeria is almost like become our culture is now becoming almost the hegemonic culture of the continent and maybe the world. Because now you can, I was in Cannes the other day, mm-hmm. and I was in a random ice cream shop, mm-hmm. and by this Caucasian guy and his family, and they were playing techno music there. That was like way back four, three, four years ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. Now, anywhere you go, it's not out of place to hear Nigerian music or see uh, Nigerian movies. It's, it's, it's been growing. Hmm. Well, it's indeed, it's been growing. No doubt. Find it. No, no, no. It'll now be part of the conversation now okay. in a more structured way. All right. Great, great. Fantastic. I mean, from your word of experience, it would be nice to hear from you. Uh, you know, the countries, if you, you could compare and contrast how the industry you know, uh, is run, especially in, in some other climes. Because at, at the end of the day, we, 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 we don't live in isolation. So so how, how, how do you think we're running? How do you think the industry is faring compared to other climes? Let's say West, for example. Let, before we even go, let's not, because we're quick to go and compare ourselves to America and uh, <laughs> UK and all the power, which honestly, I'm not like one to quickly do that. Let's look inward on the continent mm. you know what i mean because those ones they have a different history from us and whatever yeah, yeah. let's compare and contrast uh lagos with johannesburg okay south africa mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. And what you find is that the entertainment um, uh, market in south africa is way smaller in a spit in the ocean compared to what we are sitting on in nigeria but the difference majorly is the structure hmm. that has been put in place the infrastructure the backbone for that industry to thrive so the chances are if you are a south african artist and you put out your music in south africa mm. you will make your money faster and in a much more systematic and transparent fashion than if a big musician in nigeria puts out his music why the ip laws the distribution uh routes to market and how you get your music out and how you account for the payment and then you it's after making that money that you can that is and it's verifiable. This is the income you made. Hmm. So we can then tax you on what. And then the government benefits as well. But here, it's anywhere benefits. We've not been able to get our distribution. In fact, it's non existent. Hmm. And if you look at non food, how many cinemas do we have compared to the population of the food just in Lagos alone? Hmm. So it means that if you put out your movie, before you do the round of how many, the small uh, number of cinemas you have. It's time for you to give you another movie to, to, to take your place. Hmm. You never truly really recoup your, your investment. So, I mean, it's infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Hmm. And that's where uh, the government has failed woefully as far as I'm concerned. In wow. Why? Yeah. Right, great. Yeah. So, a lot of people have said that the lack of structure has worked. As, that's what has caused the industry to, you know, kind of like, oh, the movie guys, if there was a structure, maybe, uh, you know, things will not move that way. Entertainment, the creative space is like water. You let it flow and all that. So are, are you, would you, how would you re- react to that? Because um, if what you've said is, any, is stuff to go by, which is something to go by, that the structure has dealt us a blow, right, in the creative industry. Lack of structure has dealt us a blow. But some people think it's, it's just allow it like that. Or how would you respond to that? Well, it's, 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 it's what characterizes our national life. We, because sometimes, mm. there, and when you find no structure, mm. trust me, there are some people benefiting from that chaos mm. that you see. Hmm. So I, I won't. I don't want to go into that at all. But let me tell you something that I know for a fact. Sometimes the things that gets you started mm. 
are not the things that are going to take you to that next level. Hmm. So maybe it looks like apparently the lack of structure has helped trigger the explosion hmm. in the industry. Hmm. But that lack of structure is going to kill this industry unless we put it in place. Hmm. Wow. But what's going to happen is that because we don't have structures, people who have structures, i.e. Caucasians from God knows where in America anywhere, I don't like we begin to see now. If you see Beyonce jumping up and down in her video, doing Zaku and doing legwork, we are, we are all clapping for her here. Hmm. I think it's because she loves us so much. She hmm. knows that that is the culture that sells now. Wow. Hmm. So the guys who own the structure here are colonize this industry that we have refused to put structure in place for. That's what's going to happen. Hmm. But, but Steve, Steve, we've got to moving on to talking about the solutions now because um I, I know that this has been a conversation for a long time we've complained about lack of structure in the industry so 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 that would take me back uh if you want to talk about solution you take me back to what you say you don't want to talk about that now some people are benefiting from from the chaotic situation now of, See, of course. Of, I, 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 I could mention but i just don't want to no, I, mention I, I know I, I know i know and but but steve we, we might need to nail them when i need to, we, we might need to you know, bring this to the fore so that we all, I mean, if the creatives know that some people are benefiting from the chaotic situation they have in the industry and that is ripping them off their heart and, I mean, their creativity. Because, Steve, you and I know how many creatives are suffering, you know, even those who are not supposed to be suffering right now, but, you know, <laughs> they are suffering because of the lack of this structure. So, you know, for that I'll, purpose... I'll give, you an, I'll give you an example. All right. If a musician puts out... Uh, a piece of musical work. Yeah. And then, because of the chaos, hmm. feeling fat, and they have are marrying their third wife of the sweat of this musician. Hmm. The same thing with, and that's why you find, the same thing with the movie industry. That's why you find some, like, if a friend of mine could have literally went on the street one time out of frustration, hmm. trying to arrest people who were pirating his movie, selling, selling it in traffic. So if Kuli Afolayo is not making that money, his uh, golden effects, uh, company is not making the money from mm. this movie. And so some guys, and even the guys who are on the street peddling this movie are also victims because they, the big pirates are somewhere seated, did the work, and just recruited these guys to be leg runners. You know what I'm saying? So wherever there is chaos, just know that somebody is, is stripping the benefit of that chaos. Hmm. All right, Steve, what are the solutions you would propose in, in the loopholes what in the sector? is for the government to come in. I think, one, there's failure in government to actually even recognize the full potential of this industry. They know it in theory, but they don't see it practical. I mean, that is to say, if you really want to, uh, you need to establish either some kind of industry that will be solely responsible for mining creativity. Because, see, that is one thing that we have that's going to outlast oil. Mm. I don't even want to say whether it's bigger than oil, but our creativity is what's going to outlast our oil. Mm. Because as long as Nigerians, young Nigerians continue to walk this planet, God has blessed us with a certain gene that ensures that we are really just way out of it. So that's why you find that some things happen that are almost tragic. The average Nigerian young person is already thinking of how do you turn it around so that we just all don't die of frustration and, <laughs> and, and depression. And they, they, they just find a way to entertain themselves and make themselves happy. So the government needs to find a way either get the right people to be in charge of the right ministries that will do these things. People who are really, uh, who are aware of all of the issues that are there and then have the will to put some of the structures. Because now we're talking about structures and IP laws. Mm -hmm. It's not like we don't have those laws. Those laws are there. Mm -hmm. But how much does, do, do these laws have to bite? So that if you see somebody that is flagrantly uh, hiding somebody's intellectual property, what, how does the law deal with such things swiftly and this is justice delayed is justice denied so that we're not locked up in court for the next 25 to 30 years and nothing ever comes out of it all right so i, I think those are the things that government needs to do all right so then again we go into another place because i mean uh, this another question we say oh government should come in how should the government come in i've heard people i remember some two years ago at the creativity week uh shout out to chini uh, and the, the team of uh, the pictures uh talk also give me that opportunity a couple of times to talk about the creative industry i remember we hosted a session we talked about if the industry needs a ministry that's what you know put it and you know people were not happy about that they said no ah we don't want government to come you know once the government comes in ah politics and all that so how then can the government come in steve 
the government can come in from just the public, from the place of infrastructure because government anywhere in the world is a it's, it's a terrible business entity you no know, because government is nobody's business so one of the well, that's why i can imagine why people will say because of the kill that's how mm. uh nigeria has tried because government is not involved yes government should not come to run a record on a film studio no mm. but can you provide can you come in by providing the necessary infrastructure that is mm. in place if we need to make cinemas can government find a way to look for public private partnership that will help us expand our cinemas and so that people can then showcase and the government will sure make their money back. Or can they actually stand as guarantor for certain people who have proven themselves? I, I mentioned my friend, Nia yeah. Abdullah. There are certain agencies that have been here for, for, for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. You know they are not going anywhere. They still have, they are going all going concerns. Can the government put a fund with a bank and guarantee that people who have such track record can draw money and, and, and expand their business and hire more people, for instance? You know, uh, and... And uh, even from even just from a psychological point of view, the government can do a lot. Hmm. Go right. out hmm. to when 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 footballers go out to to play football and they win medals, that's rushing and governors rushing rushing to take pictures and shake hands. Hmm. When the video goes and the Ebola boy has two billion streams of their music, why are we not seeing the same thing? Hmm. So even just 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 that little, we see you, we appreciate you. We'll go a long way in making our people more creative. Wow, that's 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 really, 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 really um, um, revealing. I must say, uh, Steve. Before we, we wrap up, I mean, I must talk about the Triple A and and just before we even get into that, there's there's this area uh, that I really am passionate about. You know, I, I've been encouraging in the last one month and even more, two months or thereabout. I've been encouraging people who have lost their jobs to see how they can you know understand the value chain of their area of interest in the creative space and uh, see what they can make out of it so um are there opportunities in the creative space as it stands right now in nigeria and where are these opportunities steve well there, there are opportunities sure i mean the obvious one is music that and that's why you find a lot of people now rushing into it mm -hmm. but i say with music your talent just has to be exceptional now because the competition is literally super high in that space. There's a movie, but you see what what has now happened is that to take just movie and music as standalone, those industries have now spawned lots of other sub industries. That's right. Think back about five six years ago. Do you think the whole craze about makeup, big makeup artistry, mm -hmm. nobody nobody cared? Mm -hmm. But now. Kind of sophistication you see mm -hmm. is, uh, <laughs> within that makeup industry is crazy. Photography has now become really. If, right. if you look at uh, even design, mm -hmm. uh, wardrobe management, mm -hmm. artist management, mm -hmm. you know, and all of those things are now sub industries under those industries. So, not to talk about the ties in which, in my opinion, is probably the king of them all. So there's a lot, and from advertising, you can be either a graphic artist or you can be a copywriter. Mm -hmm. You can be somebody who is in, in that digital space also mm -hmm. working within that digital marketing industry. So there's there's a lot of opportunity for young people to have fun and get a job that you can still have, have so much fun on the job. That's right. And you can be a voiceover artist like me. I mean, I tell you absolutely, all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> anyway, before we let you go, um, um, what are your plans, Steve, to unfold? I mean, we need to know. You've claimed the exalted presidential seat of the Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria. By the way, once again, congratulations. So what are the plans? Thank what you. should be expecting? Because that arm of our creative industry uh, seems to be the most structured. And uh, I could say that with all sense of uh, responsibility. So it'd be nice to know what plans you've got. Maybe some of your plans could rub well, off I, on other pa parts of the industry. No, definitely. I mean, part of our plan is to to push a whole lot of uh, across relationship across uh, the different sectors. Shout out to Avwan. Shout out to Mipan, Advan, all of the other guys. I've, I've met with the president of Oan, mm -hmm. the outdoor, and even as far reaching as NBA. I mean, the the recent election just. 
Mm -hmm. Mr. Akwata just emerged as the president. Yeah. We have written to congratulate him. Mm -hmm. So with the legal uh, side of things, mm -hmm. we want to do cross cross relationship building with. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And part of the things we also say is also to push that that women agenda. We want to see more women. By the time I'm done with my tenure. I want to see more women on the board of and more women chairman of association. You know, I want to support women running their own agencies and a lot of all of those things. Fantastic, Steve. I mean, it's always time is never a friend if we have to stay here. We yeah, stay, we, we stay yeah. all day. And I must say thank you again for speaking with us. And lastly, in one thank minute, you. in one minute before we go, I, Nigeria is a very colorful country. You know, somehow tradition festivals are, are no more a thing we talk about. You know, do you, what do you think about you know making some of our festivals an international appeal or paying attention to that? Uh, do you think that has the potential? Well, I mean, I saw, saw a video recently uh, online. I don't know how uh, authentic that video is, but some bunch of white people actually brought a mask out of a truck uh, in, somewhere abroad, mm -hmm. and they were singing and beating drums to it. I keep saying that if you don't value what belongs to you, mm -hmm. some other people will come and take it. You see, what, what's the, what the people who came here, the early explorers, tried to do? Downplay the culture. They, they wanted us to downplay our culture and see it as fetish. Hmm. So that because those cultural values we have are so powerful, you know, they, they, when they came, when the early guys came, early Europeans came, and they saw Benin, I saw, I saw a town. Hmm. They were shocked at how that place, Benin City, the walls, how the streets were already well out back in the day. So we need, we need to really, really come back home hmm. and. Really seriously what we own because that's the only thing we own anywhere else we, go, we are going to be strangers and visitors mm -hmm. but as far as we keep to our culture mm -hmm. that is the real loss thank you so much so steve. we need to continue fantastic fantastic thank you so much steve so our sixth signing out tune is what's up lagos and you scream it and um and irrespective of if you can be president you can you must scream that what's up lagos on the show so we're going to sign okay. out with that Together, we say what's up, Lagos, but not before I say thank you again for being a part of our broadcast today. We'll keep tabs and follow up on what is happening with the Tichupe AN, and uh, we look forward to great successes in your tenure. Uh, so let's go if you're ready. One, two, go. Up, Lagos! <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Steve and Michael, they're speaking with us live on the show. We go on a break. Because uh, the ladies here to bring you an update as far as news is concerned. Well, you can always find this uh, broadcast. this on our page on Facebook. So you can fo follow us on Facebook and Nigeria Info FM. Uh, Yvonne is here with the news in just a second. <laughs>